Hello, I am Pastor Ernest L. Dees with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. As always, I am humbled and honored to share with you what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, oh hallelujah, gracious Father, I thank you for your tender mercies. Lord God, we are praying that you undergird us and move us forward. Lord God, we are praying for leaders across this nation, across this world. Oh God, we are praying for ecclesiastical leaders. We are praying, oh God, for our heads of state, everybody. Lord God, we're asking you, oh God, to remember, hallelujah, the entire body of faith. Now, Lord God, we present ourselves to you and asking you to speak to our hearts. Oh, God, let someone hear your word and say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord always for the members here at Agape, as well as all of our partners who have, amen, worked with us down through the years. All of our well wishes and supporters throughout the United States and, amen, our global community, we thank God for you. Today, I want to talk or begin a, a little mini-series um, talking about, first of all, uh, the advent or the advents. We, you've heard us talking about Jesus is coming. Uh, when you hear people say Jesus is coming, they are talking about his second coming. They are talking about the second advent. You hear very little about the first advent. Uh, we'll talk about that. But I want to put something on your heart and on your mind as we talk, as we go forward. Perhaps you have noticed that in Scripture, in the Bible, so often time, God does not give all the chronological events. Uh, he may just tell us this happened or is, this is going to happen. And he may spare us all of the details. There have been many theologians no doubt many uh, scholars who have been studying the Bible down through the years. And they try to pinpoint certain things uh, to the T. And so oftentimes they've come up short. So I want to say this. Just like, for example, there were people who thought that Jesus Christ, according to their calculations and the way they understood the Bible, that Jesus Christ would have come ever since 1988 and other dates following. Um, so I'm trying to say something here. Um, Jesus Christ, the word of God, may not give us all the minute details like some people want. For example, when God created the heavens and the earth, he didn't tell us step by step what he did and how he did it. Uh, he just said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It is up to us to accept God's word as the final authority. If God's word said it, it either happened, it is either happening, or it will happen. And so oftentimes, we would just have to take God at his word. So as we move forward on this mini-series, uh, there may be some things that I'm going to say. Uh, and you may want some minute details. If the Bible doesn't declare it, I'm not going to declare it either. But if the Bible declare it, amen, I'll be glad to share it with you. There's just some thing that we're going to have to take and accept by faith. All right. Our focus thought tonight is in the form of a question. And that is, where will you spend eternity? Now, that should be a very sobering 
question. Where will you spend eternity? Think about that. Our focus verse comes from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Reason this wise, it is appointed for men to die once. But after this, the judgment. It is appointed for men to die once. But after this, the judgment. Not like some people claim that once you die, it's all over. No. There's a righteous judge that we all we have to face. I have a scripture lesson, a text, uh, coming from three scriptures, very short verses. Genesis 3.15, and I will say just a little about Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity or hostility between you and the woman. Amen. And now, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise or strike your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Jesus talking to the serpent that deceived Eve. It is believed by many theologians that this is the first promise of a savior, of the Messiah coming. So keep this in mind now. The first promise of the Savior, of the Messiah coming. I want to look now in Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. The promise of the Messiah. Listen at this. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. I understand that this was prophesied some six or seven hundred years before Jesus Christ actually was born. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of peace. Thank you, Jesus. Remember now, we are talking about the Advents. This is a promise. I'm going to tell you what Advent means in just a little bit. In Matthew 1, 21 and 23, And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, that's important, so keep that in mind. He will save his people from their sin. The Savior really was promised to Israel to come and bring deliverance for them. Verse 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated or interpreted, God with us. God with us. Thank you, Jesus. It was prophesied that the son was going to be born. He was going to come. And we find in the New Testament, about 700 years later, this promised Messiah was born. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we plan to do a, a series beginning with the promise of the Messiah in Genesis 3.15. And we plan to move forward at, and, and end up talking about the rapture, which is the catching away of the people of God, and the final judgment of Satan and the dead. 
we will have discussion on eschatology. Now, Pastor, what in the world of that 50 cent word? Eschatology. Now, it is part of theology. Uh, the study of the nature of God and the Bible concerned with death, judgment, and the final destiny of the soul of mankind. So you may want to stay tuned. You may want to take notes. And if you have some questions, write them down. Uh, you have our address on our Facebook page and or on our website. And feel free to send in your questions if you like. And by the will of God, amen, we'll give you a biblical answer, depending on what your question is. If the Bible has an answer for it, we'll try to give you a biblical answer. Nowadays, you hear so much about the second coming of Jesus. And when people talk about the second coming of Jesus, they want to know, well, when Jesus comes, where is he going to take us? Hopefully we'll get to all of that. Stay tuned to the series. Well, I believe the first coming was more important Amen. For all humanity, then the second coming. Now, Pastor, why in the world would you say something like that? The first coming or advent, and the word advent means the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. And Jesus Christ, his coming was the most notable event in all creation that came here to earth. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus Christ, amen, God's word made flesh, came and dwelled among humanity. And that was an advent. That's the first event, Jesus Christ coming. So we want to just kind of talk about this just a little bit. Now listen, for us, this was the great expectation of Jesus to come and save the world from sin and the wrath of God. Now, although God's big picture was to allow the world to be saved through him, his first priority was to his own people. Let's take a look back at Matthew 121. It says, And she will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. For he will save his people. Those were the Israelites, those were the Jews. But he will save his people from their sins. God promised a savior for Israel, and here he comes. Now remember, Jesus came to earth to do one thing, and that is to do his Father's will. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you will, he had a script to follow. Jesus had a script to follow? Yes, he did. <clears throat> Jesus had a script to follow. Everything he did had to be done according to the script or scripture. That's Bible. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, the man Jesus yielded his will to the will of the Father. 
It was in the script for Jesus to suffer and die. Even though the man, the flesh, cried out, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But it was in the script. It was in the script for him to suffer. It was in the script for him to die. It was the Father's will. So Jesus, the man Jesus, yielded his will to the will of the Father. Now, think about something. If the man Jesus had to yield his will to the will of the Father, the will of God, do you think that we can get by and not yield our will to God? If Jesus had to follow and obey God's word and will, what made you or me think that we can live? Now, here's a word I want you to catch. What made you or me think that we can live a willy-nilly lifestyle? Well, pastor, what in the world is a willy-nilly lifestyle? A willy-nilly lifestyle is one without direction or planning. Living haphazardly. Uh, we don't care if, if, if anybody approves of our lifestyle or not. That's a willy-nilly lifestyle. How can you live a willy-nilly lifestyle and then live with Jesus throughout eternity? How can we expect to live any kind of way we want to? And then at the end of the day, expect for Jesus to invite us in to live with him throughout eternity. Something has to happen, has to change. God's word directs us how to live. It gives us instructions from earth to heaven. And if Jesus had to abide by God's word and the script, what make you or me think that we don't have to abide by the script? A savior was promised to Israel as highlighted in Matthew 121. Now, to highlight that Jesus was first sent to his people, Israel, let's read a little bit in Matthew chapter 15. I want you to listen to this. The Bible tells us in Matthew 15, beginning at verse 21. Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Gentile woman, a woman of Canaan. Now, this is highlighted because Jesus came expressly and first and foremost to Israel, the lost sheep of Israel. Now, but it says now, who lived there and came pleading to Jesus. She's not an Israelite. I want you to try to imagine what's going on here now. And she pleaded, have mercy on me, O Lord. Mm -hmm. Son of David, for my daughter is possessed by a demon that torments her severely. Just imagine what this mother must be going through to see her daughter day in and day out being tormented by a demon. A mother watching her daughter helplessly. Her heart goes out for her daughter 
and she comes pleading to Jesus. Think about this now. Verse 23 tells us, but Jesus gave her no reply. Not even a word. How do you think you would feel if you were desperate and you know and or believe that the person you are pleading to can help you, but they ignore you? <clears throat> think about that. And I really want you to hear what Jesus' reply was to her, why he didn't talk to her. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Imagine his mother pleading for her daughter. Daughter being tormented day in and day out by a demon. And she's coming to Jesus for help. And the good disciples turn her away. I pray to God a church where love abounds, that we would do the right thing at the right time for the right reason. They said, she, amen, she's begging us. She's bothering us. Tell her to go away. She's bothering us. With all of this begging, the woman is begging for her child. No doubt the woman herself is feeling the agony and the pain. She's desperate, and she came to Jesus. Think about situations and circumstances. But Jesus didn't say a word as if though he ignored her. Watch what Jesus said when he did finally talk. When Jesus finally said something to this desperate woman, listen what he said. He said, I was sent only to help God's lost sheep. What? The people of Israel. Here is this woman pleading. And Jesus said, I was sent only to help God's lost, amen, sheep, the people of Israel. I told you Jesus had a script that he was following. And that's what the Bible said, that he was going to come. He was, he was promised to Israel. But watch what happened. And I'm reminded of what's something that Elder Coleman said Sunday. He said, God is not so moved by your tears not so moved by many words, but what really moved God is a sincere faith. Thank you, Jesus. Listen what happened. But she came and worshiped. She worshiped him. Sometimes you and I have to worship in spite of. We have to give a, a sacrificial praise. We have to worship in spite of. Think about that. Worship in spite of. And she was pleading again after Jesus appeared to have ignored her and then telling her, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. In other words, you're not one of those people I was sent to. But listen at the conversation. And she said, help me. Lord, have mercy. A desperate woman believing and knowing that Jesus can do something for her. After Jesus told her that he was only sent to the house of uh, lost sheep of Israel, and she pleaded for help, but listen what she came back with. after Jesus told her this statement. Jesus said, it isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. Woo! Is that Jesus talking? Yes, that's Jesus talking. 
the children being uh, Israel and the dogs being uh, everybody else who was not an Israelite. There are controversy about whether all these people were, gen were, were Gentiles or not, but that's a subject of another day. But they were non-Jewish. Take the food and give it to, take the children's food and give it to the dogs. Boy, that was a low blow. Oh, but listen at this woman's comeback. Listen at her comeback. She replied, that's true. Jesus, I'll, I'll accept that. I'll accept a man being categorized as a dog. I'll accept that. She still was hurting and she still was in pain. Her, her child still needed deliverance. Okay, Jesus, I'll accept that. True. But then she said, but even the dogs are allowed to eat the scraps that fall beneath their master's table. Jesus, I'll settle for the scraps. I'll settle for the scraps. Thank you, Jesus. And Jesus was moved. Her faith moved Jesus. Lord, have mercy. What about your faith? Where, where, where are you with your faith in God? And listen what Jesus said to her. Your faith is great. Your request is granted. I'm praying and hoping that we are saying something here tonight that will even boost your faith in God. Thank you, Jesus. Hold God to his word. But I want you to realize something. Yes, relief came. The Bible tells us her daughter was instantly healed. Now, I want you to remember something. This conversation was not a slip-up. Oh, no. It was not a slip-up. God knew that it was coming and was part of God's master plan to bring salvation to all humanity. Amen. Oh, yes, through faith in Jesus Christ. Remember, we are still, amen, talking about the first advent now. The first advent. Amen. Jesus coming. Jesus coming to save mankind. God had a, a bigger picture in mind. Thank you, Jesus. We find in Paul, we find Paul in Acts 13 gives us a good lead up to the first advent of the coming of Jesus, amen, the Christ. Let's take a look now at Acts 13, beginning at verse 17. Uh, listen to what it says. Now, in verse 16, uh, right before that, we find that um, Paul and Barnabas were invited to speak at a Jewish synagogue in Antioch. And some other interesting things happened that we won't get into right now, but they were invited to speak at a Jewish synagogue. And uh, I want to read a little bit of that. I want to go to Acts chapter Thirteen. I want to begin at verse 17. Just bear with me here. As Paul began to stand up, he motioned his hand with the people to kind of quiet down. He wanted to talk with the people. And it says, the God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers 
and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, he brought them out. Thank you, Jesus. Now listen, now Paul is giving a little history here. Now for a time of about 40 years, he put up with their ways in the wilderness. 40 years in the wilderness. He put up with their ways. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land to, amen, the Israelites by allotment. <clears throat> After that, he gave them judges. Now, Paul is giving a little history here. And remember now, we are leading up to the first coming or the first advent of Jesus Christ. Listen. He gave them judges for about 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And afterward, they asked for a king. So God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the, of the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. And when he had removed him, and, and Saul was removed because of disobedience. Saul was removed because of disobedience. He had to step down. Amen. I hope everybody, amen, uh, that have any kind of connection with God is listening. Because God is serious when he tells us to do something. But keep that in mind. When he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man of my own heart, who will do all my will. God wants somebody that will obey him. God wants somebody that he can count on. Can God count on you? Or does God need a searchlight to try to find you when he needs you in place doing kingdom business? Keep that in mind. Listen. And it says, <clears throat> from this man's seed, according to the promise, thank you, Jesus, I told you God had promised a savior. And that savior that God promised was none other than Jesus Christ. Listen at this. From this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel. Thank you, Jesus. He raised up for Israel a savior, Jesus. After John had first preached, before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, who do you think I am? I am not he. I'm not that, that promised Messiah. I'm not that promised Savior. He said, I am not he. But behold, there comes one after me, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to loose. Men and brethren, sons of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God. To you the word of this salvation has been sent. For those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not know him, or even the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled them in condemning Jesus. And although they found no cause for death in him, they asked Pilate that he should be put to death. Remember, all, Jesus' life had to be according to scripture. It was in the script. God had a big plan for the salvation of all mankind. Listen now, verse 29. Now, when they had fulfilled all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. Watch this. But God raised him from the dead. 
Remember now. Thank you, Jesus. Paul led us up, gave us a sequence of events. Jesus was born, yes, in Bethlehem. Many things happened to Jesus. He was crucified. And when the script was fulfilled, they took him down, put him in a tomb. Now, I want to go to Acts 11. Remember now, Paul said he didn't stay there. He got up. Now, we find in Acts 111, the stage being set for the second coming or the second advent. Now, although Jesus was sent first to the Jews, thank you, Jesus. There was a bigger picture, but I want to read Acts 111 right quick. Listen at this. It says, now Jesus being taken up to heaven, after he rose, now he's being taken up to heaven. And it says, there's men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Remember now, the first advent had taken place. The child was born, just as scripture said, just as Isaiah said it. Uh, Isaiah 9 and 6, Isaiah 7 and 14, amen. It, he was born, he was promised. Thank you, Jesus. That was the first advent, the first coming. And now, in Acts 1 and 11, Jesus Christ ascending. Listen to what it says. Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. In other words, set up for the second coming. He came. Now he's leaving, but he's coming again. And my question to you is, will you be ready upon the return of Jesus Christ? Let's take a look right quick, like, at Acts 13, 46 through 48. Listen at this. Acts 13. six through 48. Listen at this. Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, to you Jews. It was necessary. That was God's plan. But what, but watch what happened. But since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, behold, we turn to the Gentiles. It was God's plan. God knew that not only was he going to come to the Jews, but he had a plan to include the Gentiles as well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. Verse 48, now when the Gentiles heard this, <clears throat> they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. Well, Pastor Dees, <clears throat> what in the world are you saying? What is the scripture saying? As many as was appointed to eternal life believed. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want us to think about something. Uh, chosen for eternal life became believers. <clears throat> 
How can that be? Chosen for eternal life. They became believers. You mean to tell me they, they, had, they were chosen before they became believers? I was. What, what are you saying, Pastor? Listen, I'm a firm believer that everyone who has eternal life, name, is already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Perhaps people that are unborn. I wasn't born from the foundation of the world. And if so, it was only in the mind of God. I'm not even 100 years old. And look how long the, the, the earth has been. Watch this. God knew in advance who was going to believe and accept him. Therefore, he was able to go ahead and put their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. For your reading, read Romans chapter 8, verse 29 through 30. Romans 8, verses 29 through 30. God knew who was going to accept him. And he was able to go ahead on and put the names in the Lamb's Book of Life. Remember, the first advent was the coming of Jesus as promised. To save Israel and all humanity. That was the first advent, the first big thing that happened. The coming of Jesus, the Savior to the world. He came. Thank you, Jesus. He came wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, in a stable. Thank you, Jesus. But watch this. The second advent or coming, he will come as a judge and a conquering king. I just want to read a little bit in your hearing. Let's turn right quick to John chapter 5, verse 26 through 30. Listen to what Jesus was saying. Listen carefully now. For as the Father has life in himself. Thank you, Jesus. So he has granted the son to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment. Because he is the son of man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming. In other words, the time is going to come in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Listen carefully. And come forth, those who have done good, to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. There will be a time of accountability. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 30. I can of myself do nothing as I hear I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not speak my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Jesus Christ is following a script. Jesus Christ is following the will, not of the flesh, but the will of his Father. I have one more scripture I want to read. <clears throat> Coming from Revelation 19.11. Revelation 19.11. There will come a time. As I said, Jesus Christ came as a Savior. 
wrapped in swaddling clothes. But next time, he can come as a judge and a conquering king. Revelation 19, 11, listen at this. Now I saw heaven open, and, a, and behold, a white horse. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. Listen. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came to save all humanity. We all are given an opportunity to get it right. Jesus' intent is not to come to crush us. He didn't come to condemn us because we were condemned already. St. John 3.17 teaches us that. But he had come to save us. And I'm saying to you, Jesus loves you so much. He wants you to be a part of his family. And there is nothing on this earth and in this life that can compare with the goodness and the glory and the honor of being with Jesus Christ throughout eternity. So I'm saying to you, whatever you are doing, amen, that, is, that doesn't line up with God's word, can you just kind of trash it? Put it in the trash can. Lay it aside and ask God to have mercy on your life. Ask God to give you a mindset to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. He loves you so much. He has his arms stretched out to you. Jesus Christ is letting us know that we must be born of water and of the Holy Spirit. We must be born again. So I'm saying to you, keep that in mind. And I'm saying to all of our listeners, when you hear God's word, whatever state of mind that you're in, just know that God loves you and showed how much he loved you as he hung there on Calvary's rugged cross. Oh, yes. With his arms stretched out wide, hanging between heaven and earth. Whatever you do, <clears throat> humble yourself. Accept. Amen. Amen. The, the direction that God is leading you. Remember your road to salvation and your recovery to wholeness can start with repentance and remission of your sin. Receiving the precious gift of the Holy Spirit and live a righteous life. In other words, we all must be born again of water and of the Spirit according to Jesus Christ. And he said, I am the door. So if anybody knows about that, Jesus does. Now I'm asking you, will you surrender your will to Jesus today and stop procrastinating? Stop taking chances with your life. I pray that we've said something that will bless you. Oh, yes. Amen. For your continued growth in God's word, we have in-person school of knowledge at 10 a.m., on Sunday mornings. In-person worship on Sunday morning at 11.30 a.m. and online word empowerment on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share with your Facebook friends and others for more information on the plan of salvation. Call 678 759-8989. And if you don't get an answer, please leave a message and we will be glad to get back with you. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we love you so much. Lord, have mercy upon us now. O oh Lord, our God, hear our cry, accept our plea. And Lord God, we thank you for coming. O oh God, the first time to save all humanity, all humanity from their sins and the wrath of God. In Christ Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you real good.